we got a very, very special guest, rookie cornerback from the Los Angeles Chargers, former Wake Forest cornerback, former Brick Dragon, mm. local boy, Jocelyn Taylor. What's up, baby? How y'all doing? Thank you for having me. Oh man, thank you for coming on, brother. It's a, it's a, it's an honor and a privilege to have a, a local legend like you on, brother. Hell yeah, appreciate Hell it. Bro. Hell we had yeah, a lot man. Of questions too. We were cooking <laughs> up, thinking about all the things to ask you, bro. Everyone had yeah. something to give on this one, so I'm excited. Oh yeah, it's I'm gonna excited. be a good one. It's gonna be a good one. And chat, if y'all have any questions, make sure to drop them. For real, make sure to drop them. Good questions. And uh, yeah, good questions. No BS. No BS. <laughs> I mean, not playing. Yeah. But all right, all right. We want to get into it, man. Yeah, let's kick it off. You can kick it off. All right, just here. So, a lot of people want to know your first season in the NFL. What was your biggest takeaway from your rookie year? Shit, you got to bring it every day. Um, mm. No matter who you uh, line up against, there's an opportunity that it could expose you. Um, there's a lot of guys in this league that people don't know about, people know about, and everybody is talented. They all have special traits, and if you come to a game lacking some, come to practice lacking some, you get passed up, exposed, and you just got to be on your shit every game. Yeah, is one play all it takes, too? You know, if somebody, you know, it shows out on a big play like that, all of a sudden, eyes are on you? Yeah, for the most part, one play mm. does does a lot, good or bad. Mm, okay, okay. And, ooh, already a fan question. Who is the toughest matchup you had in your first season? Toughest matchup? Um, Jerry Judy, he gave me some mm-hmm. sauce. He gave me some okay. sauce that game. Jerry Judy. <laughs> All right, his so. footwork is nice. Yeah, man. For real. yeah he's, he's crazy. crazy. Well, yeah. too. Yeah, he set up his route so well. Uh, credit to him, man. Mm. Shout out to Jerry Judy. Jerry Judy. So All right, so what? Let's let's counter that question. Was there any quarterbacks that that like you were like, damn, like this this guy's tough? Like, is there any quarterbacks you had to go against? Yeah, we played Patrick Mahomes twice. We played Patrick Mahomes twice. Um, yeah. I wasn't out there on defense as much, but studying film, breaking him down, oh, my God. Like, he, he's talented. He extends plays. His arm talent is crazy. Um, he's smart, and he can move with the ball. So, definitely Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, Patrick Mahomes. Mm, that's fire. I mean, that's how fire. could you not see yeah. him this past week? It's, like, it's, hard, to yeah, it's hard to, yeah. hard to discredit yeah. ball now. That's for sure. Yeah. That's for Man. sure. I got another uh, question for you. Um, who is your favorite teammate so far during your NFL career? Like, is there anybody that took you under the wing, a vet by any chance or anything like that? Um, shit, all, all the DBs, man, all our veteran DBs, they do a real good job of um, introducing the rookies, bringing us in. Um, I felt like a little brother to all of them. Um, Darwin James, um, okay. Asante Samuel, J.C. Jackson, um, Michael Davis, just – those guys, man, I mean, I hear stories about rookies coming into the league, how it's hard. They got to do all these rookie duties and stuff. Man, my DBs, they show love. I was just so grateful I had them around. I got to learn a lot from them, hang out with them, just build bonds, have talks about football, um, things off the field too, man. Those are my guys. And it really made this season enjoyable. I mean, a lot so, of rookies talk about how long the first year is, but shit, I wish that shit would kept going, man. I enjoyed myself. I never wanted that shit then. Mm, so <clears throat> Asante is another guy that's super young. You know, do you guys kind of look at each other as like, yo, we're the young core of this, you know, group, and it's our job to kind of lead the pack of what's coming next for the Chargers? Yeah, um, Zant has a great mindset, man. I mean, it was only his second year, um, but he's out there looking like a vet. I mean, um, yeah. we're around the same age and stuff, so I'll be asking him for tips. He's like, you big bro, man, we're the same age. Like, you can help me out too. Like, be real cool, real smooth. That's my dog. And he got that dog in him. Dope. I got a rookie question for you. Did you ever <clears throat> have to pay for a team dinner at all or a DB dinner of any any of that sort? See, I told you I had a good group, man. I didn't have to pay for rookie dinner. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they, they've been they've been hitting at it all year because, you know, you see it on Instagram, other teams. And they were like, man, we need a rookie dinner. We never actually got around to it. So I got lucky. Blast. Uh, nice, blast. Nice. Another one uh, coming in from Nico. What's going on, Nico? Thanks for tuning in, bro. Uh, ask him about the difficulty transitioning from yeah, college to I was the about league. To ask him that too. Mm. Mm, difficulty. I don't know. It's a lot. It's a lot of carryover, honestly, especially going to Wake Forest and stuff. I mean, mm. um, you feel like that prepared you well for kind of the speed of the NFL? Because I feel like that's what we hear a lot of guys say. Yeah, how fast when you go is to the, the NFL? Everything is just so much faster. Yeah. 
I mean, training camp, you get a you get a glimpse of that. And then the preseason games, you get a little glimpse of that. But it's really nothing that can um, simulate the speed of it. Because um, those quarterbacks, the receivers, everybody's in beat, like on tune. Um, the toughest thing is, like, alignments, where your eyes are. Like, these quarterbacks are dicing you up pre-snap. And mm. before you even know it, they already know where they're going with the ball. With the ball. So, like, little things like that. I wouldn't necessarily say the game speed, just the – just the mental thing in between snaps that um, is really different. Mm. <clears throat> you ever have to uh, like find yourself kind of going kind of improv almost like you see a quarterback reading your guy's defense, you know, you're like, Oh man, you know, I have to act on this before the play starts. Cause you're saying you see them kind of reading it. I know in your head, you're like, Oh man, you know, we have to prepare as well. Yeah. Um, during halfway during the season, we do like a little self scouts just to pick up tips that if we were scouting ourselves, what we pick up and just little things I've seen in my game that I, tip of like when I'm blitzing or when I'm playing off, when I'm playing zone. So getting that report and learning those things, I've kept a, a conscious mind when I'm out there to maybe do the opposite or switch it up sometimes, not always um, play press when I'm about to bail out or something like that. So just doing self-scouts on yourself is really important. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, Andy B, you got anything you want to I had a question. You are the, uh, from what we read, you are the all-time career, um, what is it, career plays leader at wake forest games leader um it says you play because you played five years um yeah. what what from all of that from playing as many games as you did what could you have carried over from a pretty good school wake forest is an acc school um is there any moments in college that you look back on now and you say well that's the play that kind of prepared me for where i am now uh i just i would compare my journey and how um my college career went to um my league experience i mean Coming in early as a freshman, I had uh, guys that were in front of me. And I just had to find my way on the field somehow. And then I really didn't really start until maybe my senior year of college. I really had two years underneath my belt starting. So really just um, staying positive. I, there's a lot of guys transferring in and out. I felt like I could play as soon as I got there. But just um, really stand down until I came up, to be honest, just mm. learning from the guys in front of me. And same thing at the league, man. I got drafted. Um, late in the draft um so i'm going to be behind guys who are already there and i just had that mindset where um i had to make an impact anyway special teams show out on the training camp the preseason games and just wait my turn there's no rush i'm out here in the nfl living my dream whether that's running down on kickoff um starting against the dolphins like i'm, I'm soaking it all in and when my time comes mm -hmm. i'm ready to make the most of it so i really just always look back at my college career and put that to this journey Mm, love it, love it. So, um, do you have any passions outside of football? I know you stream on Twitch. You can plug that in, by the way. Uh, do you have any passions outside of football that you plan on doing whenever this career ends? Yeah, um, yeah, I get, I play the game a little bit. So, um, all season I've been throwing up some some streams on Twitch, seeing how I feel about that. I'm starting to like that a little bit more. But um, this all season is really the time where I really get the figure out who I am. I mean, I wake up with nothing on my schedule. So I really get to find out what I like to do, um, the different things I like to explore. So I've been um, getting into that stuff lately since the season's been over. Um, been to a couple art museums, just intrigued about that stuff, um, playing video games, um, getting out in nature, man. I'm always in the house or at practice. So just getting out, awesome. living in Cali. So this beautiful weather, but Oh, yeah. um, I really haven't figured it out what I want to do after all of this is over. Mm, interesting. Awesome. We got another question coming in from our guy, Jack. Who was the first guy you saw in person and you were like, oh, my God, like I'm on the same field with him right now? Um, shit. Aaron Donald, Jalen Ramsey. Mm. We, played, we played them um, first preseason game, I believe. I was like, damn, like they big as fuck. Like I seen the first thing, like, yo, they big as fuck. I mean, even even when we had joint practices against like the Cowboys, that's a big team. Dak was out there, Zeke, C D, uh, their safeties are big. Everybody's big. And I'm I mean, I'm coming from college watching these guys. I'm like, wow, this is crazy. And then another person was um Tyron Matthew when we played against them in the um uh, the preseason game against the Saints, like I was texting my group chat, like, yo, Tyron Matthew out here. Like, this guy that I used to watch and study is amazing to see. Amazing. Mm -hmm. And I mean, Aaron Donald, the first thing that comes to my mind, if I saw him in person, is just like the thought that this guy trains with knives. So, like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I'm not messing with him. Yeah, that's a big dude. 
Uh, <laughs> all right, another fan question coming in. Uh, did you have kind of a welcome to the NFL moment? Welcome to the NFL. Shit. Um, I got a tough one. I mean, end of the year, like I said, Jerry Judy was the toughest guy I went against. I mean, mm. I started that game at nickel. Um, it was one route. He didn't even get the ball, but he had me on the other side of the field. <laughs> I was like, damn, everybody on the sideline saw it. And he's like, yep, that's Judy. I guess that was my welcome to the NFL moment now that I look back at it. And he called a deep ball on me. So, like, just realizing, I mean, I was I was playing well up until that, to that game, I feel like. And I guess I got complacent and shit. He, he let me know you can't slack. So, Hey, but then again, you know, we were talking actually about that game earlier. You know, you were a part of the play and you had said special teams that you wanted to be a part of that. Any way you could kind of get your foot on the field, you were a part of the play that won the game. So, you know, yeah. I guess in the end you got yours, right? Yeah, that was that was the first time around. Um, that, was, that moment was crazy. I mean, I was just busting my ass all night on special teams. Um, I had two former teammates at Wake Forest that played for the Broncos, so I was a little amped up. Mm. I was going against one of them early on in the game on punt. And he was talking, so I was amped up, and I finally made a play to win the game, and I was excited. Mm, that's fire. That's fire. Meet, you got anything? Yeah, um, coming out of high school, uh, what out of all of the choices of um, college, um, made you choose uh, Wake Forest? Yeah, I was committed to Temple <clears throat> going into my senior year. Only had two offers, which was Wake and Temple. So um, senior year, I was pretty set by going to Temple. Then late, late December. Um, I was sitting out a week, senior night. Um, we had playoffs next week. I was a little banged up, so I sat out. In the middle of practice, I get, like, a DM from Wake Forest. Never heard of Wake Forest. Honestly, thought it was fake. I was doing my research. I'm like, <laughs> whatever. So then, like, the next week, they flew in. They wanted to see me play. They was talking highly of me. But I sat out that game. So they came back the next week in the playoffs, and we played against um, kind of like my hometown, Neptune. I used to play uh, Pop Warner there. So... That was a big game. We played them in playoffs. Wake Forest was out there. Um, they got word of it. They was talking junk, talking about I'm about to take your offer, blah, 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 blah. But the whole <laughs> twist about it, um, I never seen myself playing defense. I always wanted to play offense. I always wanted to wake to play offense. And the Wake Forest coach was like, yeah, we want you to play DB. And, of course, that game in the playoffs, I got an interception. And then it was up from there, man. They gave me an offer. Um, then I went to an official visit there. I didn't even take an official to Temple. Fell in love with it. And the rest is history. Wow. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. We're getting mm -hmm. more comments uh, asking just, oh, here's Carol saying hi from Brick. We, they just want to say how proud they are of you mm -hmm. over there. Uh, and another one, uh, I was talking about being a small town guy. What do you still take with you from being from Brick into your big NFL career? Yeah, um, no matter your position, like where you're at on the depth chart, where you're at locally on the map, like your story could be heard any way possible. And it's I'm always trying to make an impact no matter where I'm at. And um, a lot of people in my, my area, like when, you, when you're when you good at high school football, you go play for the private schools. I mean, I honestly wanted to get it out of brick, let people know that no matter where you are, you can shine, get some offers, and really bring light to Brick Township. Mm, Dope. I got a question for you. Um, Who is your childhood inspiration? Who is your childhood favorite player? Like, who did you grow up watching that you were just in love with as far as their gameplay and who they are? Yeah, um, Mike Vick. Okay. Yeah, Vick, that's my guy. He made me, um, he made me an Eagles fan back then. Yeah, what was it, like Madden? What? Like oh, oh, four, oh, four, five? Four. Yeah, oh, four. I mean, if you were yeah. playing with that, like, you were an automatic Mike Vick. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. He's a cheat code in that oh, damn game. Ridiculous. Oh, my boy. That was ridiculous. Oh my god! Any other fan questions? Mm, let's see. Oh, what show are you binge watching right now? The good one. That's a good Ooh. one. Brought out there. A lot of good shows right now. Use um, back. Yeah, I just started you again. Um, I haven't really been watching shows lately. I turn it on and fall asleep. But I've been watching you. What did I watch recently? Yeah. I don't know. I'm watching you right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, I got a question from Elijah here. Uh, I'm local to LA, and I'm wondering how we can get these Chargers a bigger fan base. I'm wondering the same thing. This is my first year. Uh, I guess <laughs> I guess we knew in LA they don't mess with us. They like the Rams, but I guess we got to keep winning more games, and hopefully that fan base it goes up. That's what it usually comes down to, man. You know, whoever's winning at the time, that child 
those children of that era of yeah. that team winning is going to be the future fan base of that, you know, when they grow up. So mm -hmm. you got to win. You know, that's why mm -hmm. I okay. yeah, you And y'all doing that. Y'all winning. Y'all definitely so, winning for yeah. sure. Let's see why y'all don't have a crowd because the Rams is kind of happy. I mean, so far. Bad year. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go ask about that. Like, how at is least, it playing at that stadium? I mean, so nah, far, so far is beautiful. That's the best stadium I played in. That's beautiful. Yeah. These new generation of NFL stadiums are just, yeah. they're insane. What's, what's the loudest stadium you've been in? Oh, we played at Kansas City, yes. Yeah, that's Ooh, Arrow, Arrow, Arrow. We played them, yeah. um, uh, I think Go. it was the first uh, prime video game Thursday night. We played there, I'm pretty sure. And that thing was rocking, like, from start to finish. I think it's the Crazy. loudest in the league, right? Yeah. 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 And that's what that's they what say. It's the loudest. They say that number one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And would you one, say yeah. that the Chiefs then are your favorite team to play against? <laughs> Um, favorite team to play against, yeah, yeah. Like that's like playing against the Chiefs. Yeah, I mean like, they're the best. They're the best right now. So like, yeah, yeah. And we I always like come that. close down to the wire with them. Yeah. Yeah, always down to the wire. And I got to ask because our guy in the end over here, Simo, he's a big fan. Uh, Jay Herbo, is he that guy that can win you guys a Super Bowl in the next few years? Yeah, I, I thought he could do it this year, but as a team, we didn't get it done. He. He's a real special talent. I mean, coming in, I heard a lot about him and just practicing with him every day and seeing his arm talent, his strength, his ability. Like, it, this is crazy. Like, I, it's some of these throws that are unreal are becoming, like, normal to us at practice, and it shouldn't be because he's a special talent, and I can't wait for him to just continue to grow and get better as a quarterback and finally lead us to a Super Bowl so everybody can shut up and <laughs> realize how good of a quarterback he is. Heard that. A lot Heard of that. And I mean, Brennan Staley, even though, you know, some people have their doubts of him, I mean, he said that uh, Justin Herbert is the greatest quarterback he's ever seen. And, you know, he's a reputable source. So we got to give that some type of tout, you know, and he does mm -hmm. have that type of talent to where I think he could be a generational type of quarterback. Absolutely. It's just a matter Most of time, definitely. You know? it's, yeah, it's a it'll all pan out. Too. I mean, you guys are gotta, stacked yeah. over there. It's gonna get more stacked. Get, yeah, yeah, you gotta yeah. get. You gotta, you gotta beat the horse down. Yeah, yeah. and Elijah asks, "How do you prepare for a guy like Patrick Mahomes?" Whew. Uh First, we gotta keep him in the pocket, uh, heat him up back there. Don't let him get comfortable, and give him different looks. I mean, you send the same look all day; he's gonna dice you up. Um, you gotta mix up man, because if you sit in zone, Travis Kelsey is gonna find those spots, and it's gonna move the chains mm -hmm. all day. Yeah, and you gotta mm -hmm. eliminate eliminate the big plays. I mean, that team feeds off big plays. Um, it's kind of hard for them to methodically drive down the field. I mean, they do it every now and then, but they live off big plays, big shots, hype. Like, so going into the game, that's the always the game plan. But I mean, it's easier said than done. Mm, no doubt. I got another fan question. <clears throat> um, how was it guarding Tyreek Hill? It was it, it was a challenge. It really was. I mean. Ooh, his speed, yeah, his speed is crazy. You don't want him to run past you. You also don't want to play too far off, where you're just giving up easy throws. And he's quick. Um, it, it that was my first start. Bright lights. I mean, mm, uh, I know that. I rose, I rose to the occasion. I was, I mean, they was talking all week that our DBs were out and who was starting and how Tua and all of them were going to put up these unbelievable numbers. And I think we held him to like his worst game. So I was really proud of that. Just be a part of that performance. I mean, Tyreek is a special, special receiver and one of the best. And, you know, absolutely. Uh, yeah. absolutely. As a cornerback, you know, watching that Chiefs offensive line just hold the Eagles, especially a, a line as good as the Eagles, just hold them. You know, their corners are stuck on an island for however long. How does that feel out there, you know, when the offensive line just has so much time, you know, to work and you're sitting here as a corner trying to chase after these guys, you know, what's the feeling like? Yeah, I mean – Shit, that shit is hard. I mean, especially playing against the Chiefs. I mean, we're always told we got to cover these guys two, three, four times just because Patrick Mahomes, if you do get a rush, he has the ability to escape the pocket. So just covering those guys for so long after their route, they're out here just ad-libbing, playing backyard football. Your back is to the quarterback. You don't know what's going on. You're like, damn, like, did he get sacked, throw it away, what? I mean, that's really challenging, especially playing against any quarterback who get outside the pocket with receivers like that. I mean. It's always a challenge. That's why we we always um, give the credit to our defensive line when they're getting back there, um, putting pressure on the quarterback because that makes our job easier. Mm, absolutely. Dope. So, so I got another question for you. 
this is my last question personally. Uh, how was your rookie playoff experience? Is there a difference in the atmosphere and gameplay in the playoffs? Yeah, I mean, everybody saw what happened to us at Jacksonville, but yeah, shit, that Jacksonville was rocking. It was it was a little chilly, but everybody was out there. It was loud, and all the vets were talking about when you get to playoff football, like it's different. It's different. I didn't know nothing about it, and you honestly can feel like the tension and how close it is. Like even when you're up, however much we were up, like nobody was complacent on the sideline. Nobody mm-hmm. thought that we had this in the bag. Honestly, we felt like we should should have kept going, run it up on them because we owed them one what they did to us at our stadium. And we mm-hmm. knew that it's the playoffs. I mean, shit, they got pride too. Like they don't want to lose this game. Um, they're gonna come out here and fight. So the playoffs, it, it really is a different feeling. Everything is magnified. The the plays mean more. The pressure is more. I mean, shit, the payout is more. You make it to the next round, you get yeah. an extra check. I mean, yeah, it's, it is something different. It really is. Mm, and it's funny you talk about the tension because a lot of people, they're like casual fans, they're going to look at the game through the TV and they're going to say, you know, oh, the Chargers let off the gas. You know, meanwhile, you're saying everybody knows we have to stay locked in for four full quarters and it just Mm -hmm. happens sometimes and people are going to sit here and speculate, oh, you know, they got lazy and whatever, but that really isn't the case. So I'm glad you're you're here to clarify that. Yeah, people hate to um, realize that those guys on the other side get paid too. I mean, they're the best in the world as well. So, I mean, they got pride. They're not just going to roll over, especially not in the playoffs at their home field. Like, it's not going down like that. Yep, Doug Peterson, that's a Super Bowl winning coach right there. You know, he's not just going to let that happen. So, for sure, for sure. Any other questions? I got one more. I got one more. Um, Did you, uh, just a quick question. Did you play, ever play Trevor Lawrence when he was at Clemson? Yeah, I think, uh, how many years? Probably two. Two, right? Okay, so seeing him now, what progressions have you seen from him particularly? Because we, I know these guys, especially on this show, have talked about him at nauseum. Like, is he the guy? Is he not the guy? And what have you seen in his time, particularly from Clemson to now, that like changes him? Because obviously you guys played him in the playoffs. So what do you see from him? Um, He's poised. I mean, he threw how many interceptions about us and against us and he didn't blink? I mean, he has that it factor. Um, he's able to lead a team. I mean, and when we played him against Clemson, they were always hot. Um, he was always balling out against us. And I feel like he's finally getting back to that in Jacksonville. I'm not really familiar about what he was doing before I got in the league with Jacksonville, but when I seen him out there, I mean, it reminded me of him at Clemson. Urban he's Meyer was coach. Not a lot of people. Like <laughs> what he's doing. Yeah. Yeah. For real. <laughs> All right, dope. You guys got any more questions? Any more fan questions at all? Uh, Elijah asks, which player do you look forward to going up against the most? Ooh. Um, the best, Devontae Adams. Mm-hmm. St- Stephon Diggs, Tyreek Hill, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson. Like, anytime you get an opportunity against, quote-unquote, the best people in the league, this opportunity to show what you're made of. So, anytime – going against a big name receiver uh i look up for that awesome awesome and uh have you ever guarded keenan allen in practice and if so what is that like yeah um my first training camp one-on-ones um Mm. i was i was um making some good plays on the outside then i went into the slot guarding keenan allen first route he left me on the other side of the field i mean he's so like (laughs) quick and decisive like He's not a real burner, so he's not going to run by you, but he's going to make it look like he's running by you. And then as soon as he put his foot in the ground, he's out of there. His route running um, is a yeah, it, sure. it is insane. I mean, I heard about it before getting into the league, but going against him every day in practice, I mean, whew, that made me better, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And I got one more for you. So Andy had mentioned, you know, how many games you had played at Wake Forest, how many snaps. <laughs> What's it like being that durable? How do you keep up this type of durability throughout your career? I mean, honestly, getting to the league and not playing as much snaps, I mean, my body is thanking me because it feels I feel so much better, so much fresh, so much more fresh, um, faster, and being able to play at a higher level. But I was willing to play every snap, I mean, at Wake Forest, and I'm willing to do it for the Chargers, too. I just love being out there. Um, taking care of my body is um, obviously important in the way to stay on the field. I make, make my money with being available. So especially that's something I learned in the league that, these guys around me, they pay a lot of money to, to be healthy and stay on the field, whether that's massages a week, 
um, physical training, literally everything possible, they do it. Mm, that's awesome. awesome. Absolutely. <laughs> Are we good? Good, right, folks? Good. Yeah. yeah. I think that's all. All right, Josh here. Yo, I appreciate you, brother. It means a lot for you to hop on and chop it up with us for a good 20, 25 minutes, man. And mm -hmm. hey, we wish you luck next season. Yeah. Man. I'm Chargers is my second team. I've always been rocking with the Chargers. So I'm gonna be cheering for you, bro. Yeah, you already so, know. You know, sure. we appreciate you representing some small town guys over here, you know, Ocean County. So uh we hope to see you at the top, bro. We're excited to see where your career goes for sure. Thank you. I appreciate y'all having me on here, man. It's a great show. I'm going to be tuning in a lot more. I mean, I'm in the off season, so I'm going to be putting this shit on my laptop while I'm playing a game and show That's some love, man. Love. Hell yeah, bro. You're always welcome back on. Always. That's love. You're always welcome. Yep. Like you said, you're always welcome back on. Good talking to you, brother. Jossier Taylor, y'all. Jossier Thank Taylor. You. Thank you again, brother. You be good, all right?